Hey guys, how you doing? Hope you're well. So in the last video, we created a Zener regulator, which was super easy. Zener voltage regulator, I should say. It's a shunt Zener regulator. We have a variable DC voltage, resistor in series, a Zener diode, 5.1 volt, and then we get our V out here, across here. Nice and basic. So what we're doing is we're taking an unregulated voltage, whether it's a variable uh, DC one or it's an AC one that's been regulated using a half wave uh, rectifier or a full wave rectifier, whatever it is, we take the unregulated voltage and then we get a steady voltage at the output here. So this circuit here, it will do things like, for example, if I take my voltage supply here and let's say to get 6.8 volts. This circuit here at V out, it will light an LED. As you can see, that's so a 6.9 volts lights the LED there. But it struggles to power a small little Diddy motor, which I've got here from my Arduino kit which is like, I think, designed to work on 3.3 volts and um, 5 volts. And you're going to see here that <laughs> it barely... Okay, there you go. Like, trust me, that is not supposed to work like that. <laughs> what I'll do is I'll connect this motor just directly to my power supply here and show you. You can see the it was a lot faster so yeah this type this kind of regulator here it's more good for just a voltage reference but in terms of the current through the load it's just it's not really useful for driving anything like i said you can power an led but just this little diddy motor it does nothing so in this video we'll be chucking this away and we'll be improving it to something a little bit better and so you can see it's not that much more complicated literally in reality it's just an extra capacitor and a transistor. So it's basic and it's not difficult, but it improves it significantly. So let's take a closer look at the circuit itself. To improve the last circuit, we add this transistor here, which is called a pass transistor. All this really means that this transistor here is just used as an analog gate in order to control the current flow from here, which is our voltage supply. So coming from here, to this way and it's just literally just a, a switch a gate basically an analog gate that's what an npm pass transistor is so once you add that transistor there this is now called a transistor zener voltage regulator this capacitor isn't really needed it's there just to smooth the output but again it just makes it work a little bit better but you don't need the capacitor there this will still work pretty much perfectly without the capacitor. So the zener diode here is being used as a reference voltage and the transistor is being used as like to control the current and it's actually used as a current amplifier as well. Current amplifier. So the transistor, what it does is it works as like a variable resistor. So you know those potentiometers. It works as a variable resistor. And what that does is as the resistor is varying, it actually regulates the collector. So you've got collector, base, emitter it's regulating that voltage across the collector and emitter. And so what it does is as it's regulating, because the resistance of the transistor is changing, the voltage across CE is changing, which is then affecting V out voltage as well. So without going into too much detail, because I hate when these videos become like a math lesson, when you have your variable voltage here increasing, let's say from 5.5 volts, you know, up to seven volts, what happens is that the current at the base here is changing as you're increasing the voltage. So you can see here at 5.5 volts, I've got 46.9 milliamps of current there. I've got 3.7 milliamps of current going through the Zener diode. Here it's gone up to 61. So from 46 to 61, and then from three milliamps up to 18.3 milliamps. And so also over here, the current at the base is changing, right? And then this is then affecting the voltage from the collector to the emitter. And so the way that you can work out what V out is going to be is V out is going to be the voltage across the diode here, VZ, that reference voltage we said, plus the voltage across the base emitter, which is this voltage here. You just need to be aware that transistors do have a voltage drop across them, which is going to be 0 0.7 volts. So you're gonna to have to minus voltage drop from your transistor. So which is why you can see that our output voltage is 4.6 volt, 4.3 volts, sorry. 4.3 volts, 4.3 volts, because you've got a minus 0 0.7 volt drop across the transistor. So if you see here, we, this works really, really well. You've got 5.5 volts here at our supply and our output is 4.3 volts. Here we've got seven volts and our output is, output is still 4.3 volts. 
over here I've got 10 volts now and our output is just 4.4 volts so it's working a lot better than if you watched the previous video where we just had just the uh, Zeno uh, voltage regulator there was a fair bit of variance it was it was still okay at the output but I think it was going from like I can't remember maybe it was going from like 4.2 up to 4.6 or something so there was a few hundreds of millivolts difference whilst here it works a lot better and then if you look over here when you go obviously below the 5.1 volt Zeno diode so here's 5.1 volts if you only had two volts at the supply then obviously you're only going to get a very low voltage because now the Zeno diode basically just isn't working you've got an open circuit there and then you just have just like a basic voltage divider um, here and so you're still going to get an output voltage but it's going to be you know relative to the supply voltage so let's jump on to the breadboards now and just show you compare the two. So here is our uh, transistor Zener voltage regulator and here's just our Zener voltage regulator. Let me first show you with the same exact inputs what we get out of the output on this one first and then with the added transistor. Alright, so here we've got 5.8 volts at our V supply. Let's just check our voltage across our uh, load resistor. We've got 2.9 volts at only 5.8 volts, so that's not very good. Are we, getting, are we heating up or something? Yeah, see, that's basically not working at that voltage, 5.8 volts. Uh, let's just, we'll keep that the same. I'll just write it down. So we've got the Zener, so that's terrible, right? Let's take the same uh, input voltage and stick it into our transistor circuit. All right, so still 5.8 volts input. Let's just read our voltage across our load resistor. 4.4 volts so look at that that's huge like <laughs> that's just amazing man so that that one transistor makes that big of a difference so here we got the transistor zener and we got still voltage supply 5.8 volts and our v out 4.44 volts all right let's just crank it up we'll go up to 8.1 volts 4.5 volts at 8.2 so Voltage supply is 8.2 and via. All right, let's see how the normal Zener one does. So 8.2 volts in, and we get 4.06 out. So 8.2 volts in, and V out is 4.0 volts. So look, you can see here straight away that the transistor Zener circuit is a lot better. So let's just go through how it works, just in case. If you want to build this yourself what we've got is we've got our resistor here r1 coming from our voltage supply rail so we've got a voltage supply which is this positive rail here then we've got our resistor r1 100 ohm coming in across from the supply and then from here i've got this wire here going to the base of the trans transistor just up there and then i've got this wire here you know this is anodide here connected going through to ground okay Check that out. This Zener going through to ground, 5.1 volt Zener. Then from the base of the transistor, I've got the collector being connected to the positive supply rail up here. And then I've got the emitter going through to the load resistor, which goes through to ground. And then also at the base of, tra the, at the base of the transistor, I've got a 100 microfarad capacitor, which goes through to ground. It's such a simple circuit and it works so well. So the only other thing to do is we just connect in our voltage supply here. Can this circuit now, can it power an LED? <laughs> you would expect so, right? There you go. So it powers an LED fine. Let's see now, moment of truth. Can you drive this motor? Connecting this to the uh, emitter of the transistor and to ground. And that is rapid. Beautiful, right? So there you go, more than enough current. And you can see from my power supply, it's 160 milliamps being outputted from the uh, power supply. If I disconnect the load, 70 milliamps, because still got that um, 100 ohm resistor at the load. But yeah, so this circuit now, as a power supply, is actually usable versus just a standard Zener. And all we did was just add a transistor. That's it beautiful circuit cool all right so in the next video what i'm hoping to do is i'm actually hoping to use transistors in a slightly different way there's a few different things i can do in terms of putting the, the transistor in parallel or using them in a darlington pair i'm not sure what i'm going to do next 
but hopefully both of them or one of them we'll see depends on how much time i've got but i'm really enjoying learning this this stuff is fascinating and it's like you know i've literally made my own past for like <laughs> which is brilliant so yeah cool all right thanks for watching guys i'll see you in the next one don't forget to subscribe and also like the video take care bye bye